Now, the book of the Judges, there's, there's, we, we've done Bible studies through Joshua and Judges, and, and they're great books to read through, lots of exciting things happening there. But essentially, that's, that was supposed to have been the way that God designed things to be. And then after Judges, you have the book of Ruth. Now, Ruth is just, you know, it's four chapters, a short story, but it takes place, chronologically speaking, during the time of the Judges which is why it's included here at this point in Scripture. So you've got the five books of Moses, and then you've got, which now I forgot to mention, is we've entered into what would be categorized as the historical books. Okay, just going through all of this history. So as we get through the Judges and you know, Joshua and the Judges, and then through the Kings and all the, the ruling of the whole nation of Israel, essentially, to the carrying away of them being captive, all of this is history. They're historical books. It's giving you a lot of facts. Now, obviously, there's a lot of good teaching and doctrine and other things to learn, but it's still just, just outlining the way it's written, just being very historical in its presentation. So, Ruth is the story of this Moabite woman who came with Naomi. You know, and you, you know, if you don't know the story of Ruth, read that story. But it's inserted here, and again, I think it's great placement because it, it happens during the time of the Judges, and it happens near, closer to the end of the time of the Judges, and what we see here is an insight into the story of some of David's heritage, King David's heritage. That Ruth is actually part of that lineage because Ruth marries Boaz, and then Boaz begets Obed, and Obed begets Jesse, and Jesse begets David. So Jesse is David's father. Obed is, is David's grandfather. So Boaz is David's great-grandfather. So as far as the history is concerned, when you get to the book of Ruth, this is at the time frame of David's great-grandfather being alive, the story of David's great-grandfather and Ruth. So then when we get into 1 Samuel, because that's the next book, you have First and Second Samuel, 1 Samuel is the story of Samuel, right? How Samuel came to be this priest because Eli is dropping the ball. Eli and his sons, you know, his whole house gets, gets destroyed because of their sin. So God uses Samuel to be that last judge, to be that final judge for the children of Israel. He's the one that Israel is looking to, uh, to be the, the leader. And Ultimately, with Samuel, that's when the children of Israel go, well, we want, it. we want to be like the rest of the nations. We want a king that's going to go out and fight our battles for us. We want a king to do all this stuff like the kings of the other nations do. So give us a king. And that's where God tells Samuel, you know what? We're going to give him a king. And don't worry about it, Samuel, because they haven't rejected you. Because Samuel's upset that they want this king because he knows that's not, that's not what God wanted. That's not what God ordained. God wants them to have God as a king. He said, but he says, tell Samuel, you know, they haven't rejected you, they rejected me. Because ultimately they didn't want God to be the king over them. They just wanted to have some human being, some man to be their king and to fight their battles for them. God says, no, you fight. He says, no, we don't want to fight. We want someone else to do it for us. 